but you and me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump Ilium 3 into it based on this equation you've written on my goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome back to Let's Play Starfield. I'm Seven Foot Dust Bunny, and I'm here with Barrett. And, uh, just over there, that would be NASA. Which is where our quest today is taking us. We apparently have to go over here to find out something to do with what appear to be, I guess, grav drives. Where... Graph drive coding, or something to do with it, calculations, were first discovered. There seems to be a bit of a secret surrounding that, so we need to figure that out. It's actually NASA. This is one of the towers that got us to safety among the stars. Uh, yes it is. And it would appear this is some sort of a ship that, I guess, at some point may have been... An escape ship for colonists. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like something was supposed to slot in and fit on here. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But our mission that objective shaft will take us deeper inside NASA. Might need to work through some rubble. Well, thank you, Barrett. Yeah, I think we got to find a way inside, and. Power cells tend to be the way to go, and there do appear to be some conveniently left kicking around here. Well, that was fairly loud. I'll take the other one as a spare, just because. Okay. Nothing particularly exciting. Um, it, it's bloody dark, that's for sure. Um... Can we go up to the next level? I'm guessing no. Okay. Can't seem to get up any higher. Oh. I was thinking that would take us in. I mean, Barrett seemed fairly confident that was going to take us in. But it doesn't seem to have done the trick. I mean, this this seems to be doing the trick better. We're up to the upper level without using whatever that room was. How terrible it must have been for them to watch others escape while they realized it was over. So, my question is, did, did we manage to evacuate almost everyone? How, how many people did die? I don't remember if we've been told that. Yeah, in all honesty, it's dawned on me, I don't really know how many people survived or didn't survive. I mean, there was the United Colonies who banded together to get off Earth, and then the Free Star Collective split off there. But was that... were those United Colonies everyone? I'm guessing no. I'm guessing there were others who didn't want to join the United Colonies and wanted to do their own thing and may have indeed failed so I guess there were probably people left behind as the atmosphere and magnetosphere failed which um, was probably a fairly horrible way to go I don't know I, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably not a fun way to go I mean, there aren't that many fun ways to go. Okay, so I mean, we could go that way across those if we need to. So far, I haven't really seen anything particularly... I don't know, drilling rig. I'll take it for now. But it's not something I'm too worried about. Really looks like this one almost made it to launch. I wonder what the final problems were. Uh, I'm going to go with sand. 
I know that's probably not what it was, but you know. So I guess that goes round anyway. What about in here? We haven't been in here. I mean, there's a door into nothingness here. Nuclear fuel rod. Because why not? And I'm surprised this site hasn't been looted to death, I'll be honest. I mean, this looks like the kind of site you would loot to death. And there's quite a hole there. So where this one goes out and around. Do we meet up with the other door? We do. Looks like the lift is offline. Maybe we can restore power. Let's look around. Oh, we still got some power cells. Or we still got a power cell. So I'm sure we can provide it power if that's all it needs. You know, this lift has not been used for a well, while. Was it? Probably a couple of hundred years, at least. Oh, look, there's some more spare power cells here. I'll grab them for now. But, you know, if, the, if this hasn't been used for a couple of hundred years, God knows it will actually work. Okay. Um, is there a switch? There is a switch. There we go, and are you ready, Power? You coming? You coming? You gonna get inside? Or are you just gonna stand there? Okay, let me away, my man. Okay, I'm gonna say we went down, not up. Find information about NASA. Crew preparation area. I can't imagine how tense and chaotic it must have been. Pretty tense. Not sure about chaotic. I mean, I've never pictured NASA being hugely chaotic. Apparently someone had time to read Oliver Twist here. So, you know. Can't have been that bad. Okay, we got a computer. Ooh, look. He's even got a nice little pretty NASA background. Launch procedures. Remember. The final vitals and suit seal checks are essential. Yes, we've come a long way as far as tolerances. Yes, the number of people cleared for launch is much higher than it used to be. But these people's lives are still in our hands. I know there's rumours that the next launch is slated to be cancelled. But let's not have that be on us. Assume it's go time every time. Your professionalism is what makes space travel just a little bit safer. We can use every ounce we can get. Okay, access station logs. Error. Archive damage. Running system recovery. Partial archives retrieved. Delivery from Mars. Dr. Victor Alzad meeting today. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead... Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Indeed. Now let's look at the Dr. Victor one then. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little grey man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Ooh, interesting. So, what was the meeting? Station log. Dr. Judith Satien. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I, I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. Okay, so they had something 
which is unusual materials. And so far, it's either a piece of a starborn craft or an artifact, which would, of course, make sense with gravitational things as gravitational anomalies, artifacts, or related. Hmm. Okay. So, did they have an artifact or something? And is that why they thought they found little grey men? Interestingly, does that mean there's a temple on Mars? If an artifact came from Mars? Hmm. Well, we'll see. I guess. Uh, this is quite the place, but... They had a museum, but this whole place is a museum now. <laughs> anyway, looks like an exit at the end of the hall. Yeah, sorry, Bar. I'm kind of taking my time and just poodling around here. There are things to see, like here. Leaving Earth forever. In 2150, scientists first predicted the destruction of our beloved Earth. Atmospheric phenomena would cause breathable air to spurt outside of Earth's gravity, dooming all life that remained. An estimated 50 years until the end has given NASA and other space agencies around the world the opportunity to migrate humanity away from certain death and into the stars. Thanks in part to the development of the grav drive, humanity will live on. Okay. So atmospheric phenomena would cause breathable air to sputter outside of Earth's gravity. Well, well, why? Because I thought Earth's, like, magnetosphere died? I don't know where I got that from. I think that came in the Vanguard's thing. And this is one of the units that we just saw outside. This is 100% one of the ships we just saw outside. And that is the International Space Station, I think. And that is the moon lander. And this is... Isn't this a Saturn rocket when the SF-1 engines? Yeah. Developed for the Apollo mission, to reach Earth's moon, the F-1 engine was a single nozzle liquid fuel rocket engine that could generate over 6 million newtons of thrust each. Five of these would be used on the Saturn V super heavy lift vehicle. The power of the F-1 was critical in providing the necessary lift to launch rockets from the surface of Earth towards the stars. Indeed. See, I, I know a little bit about these things. I'm sure many of us who are playing this and uh, have always been interested in these things, so pay attention to such things. Like this is a lunar rover. I won't read all about everything. Um, and that is the Mercury capsule, is it not? It is. There you go. That is the Mercury capsule and this is an Apollo capsule. And is that M Mercury or would that be Gemini? That would be a Gemini capsule. There you go. Hmm. And what are these then? Project Prism. This might be interesting. NASA partnered with Nova Galactic, the creators of the Voltaire supercomputer, on an ambitious aerospace project to pull gravity itself. The result is the first spacecraft capable of faster than light travel. The first successful voyage saw astronauts reaching Jupiter in moments, what would previously have, have taken years, or previously taken years. Indeed. And, okay, this is part of what looks like a pretty modern hab. And it's even functional, which surprises me a little. So much so that I've actually got to have a look. 
and there's a digipig, and I'm having a NASA coffee mug, I'm sorry. Oh, and that door doesn't seem to work. Okay. So what does this say? Living outside Earth. While long-term missions in space began in the late 90s, 1990s, sorry, with programs such as the International Space Station, humanity began living on other planets almost a hundred years later. Small outposts of five or fewer scientific research teams eventually gave way to entire colony effort on Mars and other orbiting bodies around our solar system. Okay. And living outside Earth, this is exactly the same. Um, and this is a lunar landing module. This is not, this is a proper LEM, isn't it? Oh, it's an Eagle module. So this is Eagle module. Eagle 1 is the first lunar lander module, isn't it? Yeah, from the Apollo 11 mission, the lunar Eagle module was the first crewed spacecraft to touch down on Earth's moon. The Eagle's counterpart was the command module, Columbia, which the lunar module needed to both separate from and eventually reattach to. Columbia would take astronauts to and from orbit of the moon, while Eagle would bring them down to the surface. Excellent. Yeah. This is, so this is the same design that Neil Armstrong piloted. Okay. That's uh, good. And what do we got up here? Closed. Okay. Various closed things. Bits of interesting rock. A med pack. A space ba ba bed. Base bed, bed, base, base bed. Here we go. I'm going with base bed. Okay, and oh, we have a slate. I just don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math. I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. Okay. So that makes me feel like we're definitely talking artifact. In rooms like this across the globe, scientists figured out how to save our species. These are the heroes. Hmm. But, yeah, I'm thinking artifact was found and they're experimenting on an artifact. That seems reasonable. However, this information that's coming from nowhere, written on the back of a napkin, who's providing this information? Final days of humanity on Earth. Must have been a special sort of hell for a whole bunch of scientists. Okay. Because it's kind of interesting that she's very much inferring that something fishy is going on with where he's getting this information from. Because she's saying she can't identify anything from the artifact slash anomaly slash whatever. And he's suddenly come up with some equations while asking her to pump helium-3 over it as well, while doing something with these anomalies. I'm not quite sure how this works. Tales of space and time. Sure, why not? Um, yeah, it sounds fishy about where information is coming from, but that would mean someone already knew how to use grav drives. You're done? Impressive. I like to think so. 
Yeah. So I'm definitely feeling confused at the moment because I'm not sure who's feeding this information. Power required, okay. Uh, where do we put power? Here somewhere? Power switch, there we go. Because my only thought of who can be feeding the information would be Starborn. Right? But if people, we, are the Starborn, how could we go back to this point and provide the information? Can you get sent back in time? In part of this, I don't quite understand. You know, my understanding is, well, at least from what the Hunter and um, other universe Sarah have told me, is that you're sort of in the same time, almost going through like a time loop. Okay. Sorry, I was diving through these. I was going to cut it all out. Uh, but there was a NASA maintenance key right here in this room, which might come in handy. Just in case that happens to be useful later. On the most part, it's just been, you know, resources and general rubbish like that. Nothing particularly useful. But yeah, from what the Hunter and Sarah have said, I'm not taking this one, I've got like five already. Um... I don't know. There seem to be a lot of them conveniently placed around like I'm going to need them. So I feel like I'm going to need them for something. Yeah, I get the feeling that, that they're going to turn around and say the Starborn did it. In which case, I kind of want to know how. Oh, a, snas a NASA snow globe. Yes, please. At that point, I want to understand how that happened how that works because at least to my understanding that's that's not going to be a thing all right open the security door please thank you and i can close the security door by bar oh he can operate it damn it i didn't think he was that smart okay and what do we got here yeah, there's a lot of just little little crap loot here, which I guess for the mo most part you would expect there to be nothing good because I would have expect La NASA to, like I say, have been looted the crap out of in the past. So, you know, because if you're the first people separating off from the UC or whatever, will you come here for scavenging? Ooh, hello! Uh, oh, wow. Not entirely, no. There's definitely more there. There's a robot there. Okay, I see Barrett's get really getting the hang of using himself here and like sort of even playing off himself. A lot of automated defenses. So, whoa. Well, okay, that. that one was right that behind there. Definitely takes out the this side of the family. All yours. Vasco does. I I feel sorry that we just shot, you know, Mini Vasco here. I feel bad for Mini Vasco. Nothing particularly exciting. Polytextile. Of course, I'll have all the resources. That sounds concerning. What's going on? That sounded concerning. I mean, we probably can grab the bits from all these. I'm just going to have a look around for loot. I'll probably again trim it out. Okay, so just come into a room here which was an advanced lock pick. Um, which I think I might be able to get through the other way as it happens down through the door at the back. There's a power switch here. Oh, and here we have turret control. You know 
what you're doing with these systems. Yeah, sadly that was just turret control. Nothing else. No interesting bits in there as an extra sort of source of information. But yeah, I got a funny feeling. I probably could have walked around to it, yeah, this way. But I did see this open door earlier and I didn't go through it. When I was looking around, doing my looting. Um, and there is a switch over here for opening the door. Am I overloaded already? I am. I might have to offload to Barrett in a bit then. There we go. Barrett is now full of resources. Meaning I can actually move at a sensible pace without having to have too much trouble. I mean, you know, all the free resources, I may as well have them. Uh, what is that down there? I'm worried about more turrets. The turret control didn't show any turrets, but, you know, it's feasible that there could be more defences here. Around this is going to have no power. Oh no, you do have power. Okay. You have power. You have pretty much nothing. So I guess we're going to look at the computer and maybe through the door. Security procedures. Security procedures. Check all bags before allowing access. Yes, even the generals, I don't care how angry they get. These are direct orders from the secretary. Absolutely no phones or recording devices. All written materials, clipboard, notebooks are to be checked on exit from the labs. Confiscate anything with confidential information on it. Okay, access logs. Partially damaged, recovery. Project log, Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Okay. So that's why they needed Nova Galactic. And they... Is it an artifact then, if they said we don't need the original? Project Lock. Dr. Judith Petian. I watched the Gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years. Decades before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be. But no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. Hang on, side effects of grav drives? Okay. I mean, you didn't say there were any, but certainly sounds like she has concerns. So this is all... Tied up, yep. Yeah. And okay, we have whoa, a large hole right the there. The artifact isn't far now, but look at all this stuff. Simply astounding. I'm I'm sorry. Are you confirming it is an artifact, Barrett? Because he just said the artifact isn't far now. So, I, I didn't actually know there was definitely an artifact. Okay, and suppress gun. Nice. I'm not sure if Sarah actually said there was an artifact at this site or not, but I'm guessing then that there is definitely an artifact. Because Barrett seems to be convinced there's one. But in the meantime. 
Do you mind if I uh, see what's behind here? Because curiosity says, holy shit. Whoa. Okay. Um, can I come back in now? Okay. So what the what the hell? What the hell? Gravity disappeared. Okay. Um. So do all roads here lead to Rome or what? Um. Oh God. Yeah. So there's no gravity here again now. And there is a dead scientist. Hello, sir. You have a lab key like I had, and you have a NASA maintenance uniform. Good for you, sir. Okay. So, oh, hello. Um, right, where do all these things go? Open door, go through. So yeah, this is an all roads lead to Rome situation, I think, because there's a couple of levels here. That is not where I was. But again, this all seems very similar. Um, and that takes us out probably to the stair while we were just floating in earlier. And what is this area? Oh, hello, computer it is, along with the body. Unfortunate. Oh, it, that's the doctor, Victor Isa. Okay. And prototype drive. Please be careful. Whenever running power through the prototype, secure all loose objects and have researchers empty pockets and remove jewelry watches ETC. Remember that the core of the drive contains a specimen that is irreplaceable and all data is under the strictest clearance. Exercise all caution with all research materials and ensure information does not leave this lab. So, okay. And let's read these logs. I never actually got to visit your labs back when we were working on the grav drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanups to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Okay, he sounds like he's hiding something. And Earth's gravity acting funny. Okay. Oh, got to read this one by the looks of it. To do this, Victor and Lan... As requested, the astrophysics research team has done a full analysis of the data you provided us. The measurements of Earth's magnetosphere show clear signs of fluctuation, often in correlation to periods of frequent and large gravity wave spikes emanating from the moon. Okay. These gravity waves seem to be affecting the magnetic shield provided by Earth's inner core and may be affecting the core itself given the proximity to the source. The data indicates that the change rate is increasing exponentially. Oh, that's bad. As our magnetosphere falters, its ability to protect us from the sun's solar wind falters. Beyond the devastating effects of solar radiation, this will lead to something more dire, the sputtering or stripping away of our atmosphere. This has happened before to Mars, a planet studied since the earliest days of space to see into Earth's possible future. We are afraid this future may be closer than we ever thought imaginable. Some may view this data as normal. There have been historical fluctuations and polarity changes of Earth's core, but this is orders of magnitude greater. 
we see echoes of previous generations debates over global warming and we want the science here to be clear. Like waves in the ocean, these gravity waves rise and eventually crash into shore, the earth, with devastating consequences. Dr. Luke Andrews, uh, chief scientist. Okay. And? I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from the satellites is very clear. It's the graph drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet, but more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God, one that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time, I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. Wow. Um, okay. So, definitely was side effects. Definitely the grav drive. People were jumping from the moon, which is why they were talking about it emanating from the moon. And it seems like something relatively minor that they could have got right. Because if you can fix it with a small update, we're not talking about like a fundamental hardware issue. So they could have fixed it, but he knew this was going to happen. So did they not? Did he not try and fix it from day one? My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this... confession. Whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met... myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere, sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive, this artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. Okay. So. 
It was the grav drive, but I don't understand, it was something relatively minor. And apparently I need to press this button, so it's going to unlock the artifact. Ooh, and apparently turn off the anti-grav. Um, which was relatively easy to fix, which I don't quite understand why, why we wouldn't have fixed it or tried to have fixed it if we realized there was a problem beforehand. I kind of want to see what that coffee mug says. Yeah, I don't really understand why we wouldn't have tried to fix fix it. Obviously it was fixable because we have fixed it. And we don't need the artifact to run the drive. So yeah, I'm, it, all, it still left me a little bit perplexed as to what the actual issue was. Why hide the issue? Why not, you know, point out that there was this issue with it in the first place and try and get everyone involved in fixing it? I mean, obviously he said there was a big future to see. I'm guessing this is our Skyrim door. So, um, you know, he said there was an amazing future to see, which is, I'm sure, where we're supposed to be right now. Um, excuse me, can I get down here? Eh, not a lot of useful stuff here, just small crap. And I'm assuming I can get the hell back out of here. Yes. And there's another door there by the looks of it. But this is, oh, this is the room I was in. question is where that other door goes then. I'm going around in bloody circles here. But yeah, I just don't understand why they wouldn't have tried to, to fix it. I mean, obviously, in that lost time, a bit like... Jinon, whatever his name was, from the Varun. Um, he experienced lost time, but he somehow met a future self, and a future self told him this was going to happen. And there we go. We've arrived on the surface of Earth. We need to discuss what you found. And it looks like other Starborn got here before us. So. You might have company. Okay. So, what you're telling me is leaving this place might not be as easy as you might think. Okay. But, I think our daring escape will be next time. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe as always. And join us again next time. Thanks a lot.